My father was a wise man, a Lutheran minister, Shakespeare scholar, and docent at the Art Institute of Chicago for almost two decades. He had an encyclopedic knowledge of history, art, and literature, opera, and food. He collected wine and vintage spirits. He could read Latin, Greek, Hebrew, and as a diehard Yankee, Cub, Bull, and Blackhawk fan, he knew sports trivia like nobody's business. He was the family Google before Google, the ultimate phone a friend. He was brilliant, and he knew it. As a result, he often told people not only what to do, but how to do it, the proper way to scramble eggs, the optimal number of times to toss a salad, he once gave me directions to my own house when he came to visit, a house he'd never been to. And the thing was, he had the directions right. Irritatingly, he was almost always right. When my dad told you something, it was a good idea to listen. Which is why, as he lay dying in the ICU following abdominal surgery gone terribly wrong, and he was about to go back under the knife, when he called to me, I leaned in close, expecting to hear pearls of wisdom. In a voice far diminished from his normal booming one, he said, there are two Bob Chin gift cards in my wallet. Make sure you use them. My dad had a cornucopia of gift cards because as a minister, he performed weddings, baptisms, and funerals all the time, and grateful families often gave him gift cards to thank him. I figured that's what he was referring to, a couple of thank you gift cards, and yet, when he uttered these words, all I could think was, what? <laughs> he may be dying and that's what he wants to tell me? Use some gift cards? <laughs> Who in the hell is Bob Chin? This is not, however, what I said. What I said was, Dad, when you get out of here, you can use them yourself. I thought this was a perfect blend of optimism and incentive. <laughs> <laughs> he replied, just listen to me. They're worth a lot. Promise you'll use them with your brothers and sisters. I turned my head toward the window so he wouldn't see me crying and promised. Waiting in the surgical center with my older brother, Phil, and middle sister, Trisha, I told them that just a few days earlier, Dad had been walking laps around the seventh floor, dragging his IV pole, saying they should reserve rehab for people who really need it. <laughs> He'd whooped my ass in five consecutive, highly competitive games of Bananagrams. <laughs> Dad had been getting better. Until he wasn't. The second surgery took seven hours. Dad never walked or went home again. For a year, he lay in beds in rehab facilities and hospitals, suffering from what is commonly referred to as ODTAA syndrome, one damn thing after another. On bad days, he was morose. On good days, he charmed the nurses and bitched about the food. Almost every day, regardless of pain level, he watched Jeopardy, calling out the answers before the contestants buzzed in. And whenever things got dicey, he'd mention those Bob Chin gift cards. His five kids took turns at his side, trying to keep his spirits up as his condition deteriorated. About 10 months in, rather than focusing on his piss poor numbers and lack of motivation for PT, I decided to interview him with questions ranging from what event most shaped your life and what is your greatest fear to a series of favorites, favorite movie, play, book, work of art. For three days, Dad came alive, telling stories for hours. I learned things I'd never known about a man I'd known my entire life. How in seventh grade, his love of the Yankees had morphed into a brief stint as a bookie <laughs> with his own bodyguard, a kid by the name of Eddie. How he'd almost lost our mom to his arrogance long before he lost her to Alzheimer's. How his favorite works at the Art Institute included many religious pieces about resurrection and hope, but also nighthawks depicting loneliness in the city he'd always call home. Two months later, my father died. 
On a cold January night, four of the five of us gathered in Phil's kitchen to plan the funeral when my oldest sister Amy explained that Dad had known exactly how he wanted his to go. He'd left explicit instructions for the minister he'd chosen, the hymns, Bible passages, the sermon. <laughs> You've got to be kidding, Phil said. He wrote his own funeral sermon? <laughs> well, no, it's not that bad, Amy replied but I think we should give the guy dad's notes. <laughs> His notes, Phil said. Yeah, Amy replied, things he wants the guy to say. <laughs> Absolutely not, Phil said. There's no way we're telling the minister how to write the sermon. That is just not done. Dad cannot control this from the grave. <laughs> I have always disliked conflict between my siblings. A swift diversion was needed. Speaking of control, I said, there are these Bob Chin gift cards we're supposed to use. <laughs> my brother started laughing. He told you about those too, my little brother Michael asked. Multiple times, I replied. I think he told all of us, Amy said. They're for Bob Chin's crab house in Wheeling. <laughs> As if being in Wheeling, a suburb about an hour away, meant something. You know, Phil said, that's not far from the funeral home. We could go there tomorrow. Mm. So the next day, after meeting with the minister to give him an abridged version of Dad's notes, <laughs> we went to Bob Chin's crab house in Wheeling. According to Forbes, in 2012, Bob Chin's was the top grossing restaurant in the United States. A Chicago Tribune profile described Bob Chin himself as, and I quote, a brassy, gregarious, outsized personality, operating with the subtlety of a punch to the solar plexus. <laughs> The same could be said of his restaurant. Oh. Trisha wouldn't arrive for hours, so it was only four of us sitting in the booth gazing about in shock and awe. <laughs> the menu was over the top. Oysters, prime rib, sushi, scallops, six ways, pot pies, tacos, stir fry, and crab. Lots of crab from Australia, <laughs> Louisiana, Florida, Alaska. Phil handed the gift cards to the waitress. Can you tell us how much is on these? The answer came back, $250. 250 bucks at a suburban Chicago fish house at lunch goes a hell of a long way. <laughs> and Bob Chin also serves alcohol. <laughs> we ordered a bottle of Chardonnay, pitchers of increasingly delicious Mai Tais, and a table full of fish. After two glasses of wine and a Mai Tai, I called the hotel we were booking for extended family to discuss a Yelp review I'd read about the hot tub not working. <laughs> I explained to the hotel clerk with irrational exuberance that it was critical to have an operational hot tub that could accommodate a large group. <laughs> in the background, Amy called out, ask if we can bring our own alcohol into a banquet room. The clerk asked, is this a bachelorette party? <laughs> Bachelorette party, I said, no. No, it's a funeral. <laughs> we were at Bob Chin's for almost three hours, <laughs> recounting dad's stories crying, but mostly laughing. Bob Chin's crab house is not the sort of place to be sad. <laughs> it would be hard to be sad at Bob Chin's. <laughs> After lunch, we split up. Amy and I went to choose floral arrangements. Michael and Phil were off to the funeral home. Later, I would be appalled that I drove to Dad's preferred florist and selected funeral flowers in a clearly compromised condition. <laughs> I blame the grief and Bob Chin. <laughs> Amy and I argued about color choice. She advocated for purple and white because three of the five kids went to Northwestern and Dad loved the wildcats. <laughs> I snarkily suggested, in that case, maybe we should go with navy and white in honor of the Yankees. In the end, we hugged, ugly crying the way drunk women do, <laughs> before settling on yellow and white with navy-ish purple accents. I recently learned that my brothers began to wrestle in the foyer of the funeral home that <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> Literally exchanging faux kidney punches and falling to the ground. This should have been embarrassing, but as, Dad, as Phil pointed out, my father had conducted dozens of funerals there, so the funeral director was likely to cut the family a break. <laughs> Trisha arrived in time for dinner. More wine was consumed. Michael and Phil wrestled. 
While editing the family eulogy I drafted, which included references to the three-day interview, Trisha said, we should go see Dad's favorite works of art. So the next day, we did. We drove downtown and went on a treasure hunt, took pictures, met with young docents Dad had mentored who told us how he'd changed their lives, how they would never forget his signature parting phrase, be careful out there. <laughs> that evening, after checking into the hotel, the five of us, our spouses, and seven of Dad's grandchildren met in Amy's room to toast the family patriarch with shots of vintage tequila <coughs> Phil had found in Dad's hall closet. <laughs> it was crowded, boisterous, and delicious. Yeah. And the hot tub was operational. <laughs> For the next two days, we hugged relatives and old friends, met people we'd never known who loved our dad, and shared more stories. We shed some tears, but we also laughed a lot. The Bob Chin mood stayed with us. The morning of dad's funeral, contemplating all we had lost, and doubting my generation's ability to take on the mantle of wisdom, I wept next to the scrambled eggs at the breakfast buffet. My daughter comforted me. You're going to be great, Mom, she said. Just channel Pop Pop. He'll be with you. He'll be with all of us. It took years to realize just how right my daughter was. Dad was with us the whole time. In the hymns, the tequila, the art treasure hunt, the Bob Chin feast. <laughs> One could view this positively, calling the week of his funeral a true celebration of a life. Or... One could say dad controlled the whole damn thing from the grave. <laughs> or both. The truth was, even the eulogy I delivered ended with his words, the wisdom we all longed for. During his illness, I read, my father's strength was an inspiration. He was tested. His voice sometimes lost its resonance and power, and yet, when I asked him what advice he would pass on to his grandchildren, that voice came back loud and strong. Keep the faith, he said. God is good. Do your best. Don't lose those closest to you. Show them you love them. Be careful out there. <laughs>